Hey guys, we have two vampire stories today. The first is about railroading edgelords and the second is about a cringy vampire with a touch of the tism. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe and I'll see you at the end of the video. Mr. Bombardini was a simple man, refined taste. He was also a Maseralius, which to those who don't know slash don't care, get to actually eat flesh for vitae and such. Playing against the usual angst and gloom of the group, he was presented as an upper class gourmand seeking nothing more than the simple pleasures of eating children and crazy people. Fortunately, the GM was willing to allow bloodlines, and because he, sort of, fit in with the rest of the group, it was allowed. The rest of the group was playing a bunch of angst goth mechat, all wearing leather and packing giant revolvers. So Mr. Bombardini was quite out of place in a carefully maintained suit with his fussy little napkin. The point of him was to show it's possible to be dark and evil without actually being over the top, over sexualised creatures of the dark. Stats weren't the greatest because I dislike the min-maxing of a lot of Bloodline users, but he worked as a combat monster. The first sign of trouble came when I accidentally pulled away a victim from one of the other players, managing to kill their dice rolls and charm them by being a cheerful, fat old man in a nice suit and promises of patronage for the NPC. You see, I pulled the victim away from a player who was using the game as wish fulfilment and that is a no-no in crazy grips. Now, after succeeding in eating the random art student and getting ridiculous levels of Vitae, Mr. Bombardini decided that it would be a good idea to be a team player for a little while. Now, as a rule, I try to avoid using out of game knowledge, but the situation that next arose called for it. The GM had us running around attempting to procure slaves for some sort of magical orgy, and I could see where things would end up. Players bringing human livestock, told to fuck off by vampires we were trying to unseat from their position of power. Players get angry, fight and choose. So, in his meek little manner, I voiced my concerns for their plan to raid a bunch of fraternities and sororities. Wish fulfilment, am I right? For people, and instead suggested a route that wouldn't get us killed. This was, of course, immediately shot down by all other players, and so he continued being his meek little self. A couple of sessions down the road, things have gone as they thought they would. At least one player had a character killed and, in true angst fashion, created a carbon copy with poorly explained reasons for wanting revenge. We're talking a race name on sheep, play character again, levels of copy. Now, as a gentleman, Mr. Bombardini did not, as a rule, enjoy working with these young upstarts, and so decided that a little political manoeuvring is in order. At this point in the game, most of the other players really, really disliked me. I had taken their escapist wish fulfilment fantasy and inserted an incredibly fat man in a suit who tended to eat any victim he managed to get alone. And due to the bloodline traits, it was pretty damn hard to stop from doing that. Politics came in when I cut a deal with the aforementioned plot villain and offered to sell out the grip. They were breaking the masquerade hard at that point. In return for a guaranteed supply of food and a large mansion in the hills. Now, none of the players knew about it or had any way of knowing about it in-game. This did not stop them from constantly trying to screw poor Mr. Bombardini over. Eventually, the GM took me aside and said that if I wanted to keep playing, I'd have to tone the character down, despite the fact that other players were doing things that were more ridiculous and idiotic. Doing obvious shit that would get noticed, taking out high church authorities, leaving blood ritual marks on public walls and such. Apparently playing a £600 vampire wasn't considered proper in a game where everyone wanted to be their own magical vampire pal and escape from the taunts of others. Normally I would be okay with this, but the failure had begun to mount up. So Mr. Bombardini did the only sensible thing available. He started eating everyone he could find, because it left little evidence. He'd give great boosts to the Vitae and made it so the other characters couldn't fuck with him. This didn't stop them from trying very hard, in the session before Mr. Bombardini's final one, they attempted to lock him in a freezer and sell him out to the police. For no reason other than out of character justification because, up until this point, he'd been helping them with their insane schemes. They succeeded in locking the freezer and left, demanding the GM simply leave the character to die slash be caught by the government and media, thus revealing all of the vampires to the world and completely dethroning the story. So long story short, the GM had me run through some cops and a local action news crew. After consuming them, Mr. Bombardini was slightly annoyed, so much that he decided subtly 
was for the pussies. The rules were off and these fuckers needed to die. Because they were stereotypes. The rest of the party converged to a goth club to celebrate ridding themselves of the fat menace. One of them, butthurt player who reinserted as the same person, went off to feed on random lesbian due to combat that evening. Mr. Bombardini was there. The session ended on that high note and the players demanded that I leave their character alone because this actually means something to me at this point. There was a lot of shouting because they figured I was an ass for even considering hurting their precious characters despite the fact they all tried to kill mine. With a final gasp, Mr. Bombardini falls into final death. While I was out, it was decided that the Toreador was offended by his lack of refinement and appearance. Despite wearing a well-kept suit and generally being the only person in the party not looking like some insane goth raver and killed him, the GM did my roles and just offhandedly said that I failed them. That's right, failed an entire vampire combat in the same time it takes to smoke a cigarette and order pizza. As a well-built creature of combat, I knew that Mr. Bombardini wouldn't have gone down so easily. So the argument started, and because of all the hate, I was not allowed to roll for it. I realised that shit sometimes goes that way, so I said fuck it, and tried to keep gaming with him. When making a new character, I was immediately told that I was not allowed to play the same type of character, and I would start off as a completely basic, despite all the other players getting differently, and exampled above. In the end, Mr. Bombardini had a short yet rich on life. He killed some dudes, ate some children, and injected levity into a game of vampires. For these crimes, he was killed by a jealous party of escapists. I understand why these people need the game to escape from life, but in the end, do we not all wish we were a £600 man who ate children? Triple bonus points to anyone who knows why his name is Mr. Bombardini. So, December 2018, I had been waiting to play Vampire the Masquerade for so long. I was really excited when a storyteller found my application really cool and all, and I never had an issue with him except with what happened. I'm a 21 year old girl at this time, and my schedule was really open for late night Vampire the Masquerade, and I was so excited. I even brought along my best friend. I'll just call her Anne. Okay, so the party consists of two Bria, a Torador, myself as the Ventry, and finally the player the post is about, the Nosferatu. Everyone got along exceedingly well, except this person, whose name is Ronald in this post. He would run off, do things on his own, disgrace the Camarilla Coterie, and do things that would regularly displease the party and the prince. Even pulling a gun on the prince and being allowed to live for reasons that I didn't know at the time, and is very relevant to this post. But most of all, his weird fascination with my character and me IRL really put me off. He would message me, complimenting me after the session and would say really weird things like, I should do ASMR, but ooh. <coughs> Disgusting. Cringe. Like, I would do ASMR because my voice is so soft and sexy. This is a 39-year-old man flirting with a 21-year-old girl who definitely is not interested. I was like, oh, thank you. Thanks. Thanks for staying. <laughs> That's very nice of you and would generally try my best to avoid him. In our Discord channel, we had individual phones that only we could see unless someone asked for permission to text us and was given permission to see the channel. One night, he texts me and asks to go to a nice restaurant with just him and I. We had been to this place before to talk to this girl named Fiona and I'm like, sorry, I'm not interested. And after that, he seemed completely understanding of what I wanted, but something was weird. He specifically asked the prince to learn dominant, and after a while, he did learn it, bringing it up to two points. We didn't really care what he did, because he was always off doing whatever. But a few months into it, we're finishing a task for the prince, and we're just settling in our havens and everyone's saying goodnight IRL. And then he tells the storyteller to pull me and him aside for a second. And I'm like, this is wrong, what's going on? Anna was asked to leave and she asked me to Skype her and ask what was going on while it was happening. So, what happened was, he had finally gotten two points into Dominant and it was actually what he wanted. He showed up at my door and I calmly asked what's up because he himself hasn't been seen in four days in character and everyone has been looking for him. He looks into my eyes, uses Dominate 
and says he begins to mount me and beckons me to drink his blood and have sex with him. <laughs> oh uh, my god. Why, why do vampire games always attract the worst players? I know. They really fucking do. However, I pass my checks and the effects of Dominate diminish and don't affect me. I then ask the storyteller to roll initiative. I, as of entry, have proudly served as a frontline fighter, using a trusty combat knife to kill people. And I definitely am not going to let some slimy Nosferatu try to rape me. The storyteller is at first compliant. I easily massacre him. And as he lay in torpor, I come over and want to deal a killing blow. However, the storyteller stops me. In my confusion, I ask why not. He pulls me into a different chat, explaining that this whole time Ronald has been his cousin. He goes into how he has a learning disability and all this shit to make me feel sorry for him. And I'm like, right, okay, now back to killing him. Jesus Christ, what the fuck is wrong with these people? It's like that guy we know, I have a touch of the tism, so I can't touch kids. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, I forgot about him. Keep going, keep going. He says if I try and harm Ronald anymore, I will be removed. I was beyond angry. I didn't take the rape thing personally at all because it's just a game. Though I should have. But the fact I couldn't do anything about it was beyond dumb. Trying to rape someone who doesn't like you definitely constitutes as PvP cause. I told him me and Anna were leaving, and that's just what we did after I told her what happened. I also told the other players what happened, and in their disgust, joined me in leaving. It's almost been a year, and when I think of it, I just laugh now, but at the time, I was really upset about what happened. We all move on to different games, and I'm way more experienced in Vampire the Masquerade now. I don't know why he did it. He said he wanted to use me to get to the prince, but we're all newborns. I had no pull with the prince at all. The same as everyone else. This post was in no way me saying, Ugh! I almost got raped, pity me. It was me complaining about how I didn't even get to fight back at something that was totally justifiable because of bias and poor storytelling. Now, I'm much more wary of guys like him. And I don't waste time making sure that I will literally give them final death if they try what he did. Thanks for reading. So, like, I don't know about you guys, but I guarantee you that wee fella, the Nosferatu, absolutely stinks of piss in real life. 100%. Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. I'm, I'm, I, like, you know what these people like? Why is it? Like, you know, I know D&D is a bit of a different audience than 40k, but I can tell you in real life now that 40k attracts the biggest neckbeards, and I find D&D attracts more, like... White knight esque yeah. type characters. I don't know. I like you tell me about your experiences with these people. Like you know, but there is something about them. And also, vampires, see vampires. Vampires. Vampires attract the biggest load of gothy edge lords. I know. Uh, I know. Don't get me wrong. I like vampires. Though. I think vampires are cool yeah. as fuck. But they seem to just attract like the worst people. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's got a, like a weird, horrible stigma about it. You know. Thanks for everyone for buying the models. By the way, it means a lot. And there's more coming with big old titties for you, so it's fine. Yeah. You just don't need a private message. <laughs> yeah, I've got a few emails, and like you'll be sorted out soon enough. Don't you worry. Yeah. It's coming. Just keep an eye on the store, because stuff goes up, and it sells out, and then I really don't know how long it's going to be until more yeah. is least stock. Yeah, so. but you will get more. But thanks for watching anyway, um, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye!